What's up, divas and divos? Of course, you know it's already your girl April, and it is Real Talk Wednesday, despite that it's really Tuesday, okay? But first of all, listen, you know it's Tuesday, it's the 20th of June. Yesterday was Monday, the 19th of June, which means that a bitch turned a year older, okay? So yesterday was my 43rd birthday, and I had an amazing day. I spent it with my kids. They cooked dinner for me. They sang a birthday song to me. My grandson was the best singer out of all of them. You know, granted, he's two years old, but he was the best singer out of all of them. Um, he kept singing birth happy birthday to me quite a few times throughout the day, which made it even more special. Even though you don't really understand him as much as you would understand everybody else, his version is just way cuter. It's just more heartwarming. Um, though my kid's version was heartwarming too, but just to see him do it and then come up later when he's about to go to sleep, say, oh, night night, my mom, because I'm my mom to him. And then tell me, um, he said, happy birthday. And then he sings, he gives me his little eye movie, happy birthday to you. And I'm just like, oh my God, he's just so freaking adorable. Plus, it's just even more adorable because it seems like he was like this little just like a, a minute ago and now he's two and a half and he's just talking he's doing his own thing so they grow up really really fast you know what i'm saying they grow up super fast last monday was my son's birthday he turned 19 um they all just grow up so fast like I, it's unbelievable that my kids are the ages they are 21 to be my my eldest would be 25 years old in august then my my mumsy she'll be 10 in august and then my tati she turned 21 in april and nay my nay she turned 15 in april like you know and then me and wuzzle 19 and 43 like <sighs> time goes by really really quick when you have kids like seriously before you know it they're just like grown-ups but anyway so yesterday was cool it was my birthday um i had a great day we went shopping i hit up one of my favorite stores again which is this thing is so heavy bath and body works so i already did a video haul on this stuff but if you want to see this one and you want to see this one with my girl mumsy the hashtag mumsy bath and body works and we will do this one together but we do have a dollar tree video that we'll probably do tomorrow meaning um it should be a probably like either thursday or friday because we didn't put one up last week um unfortunately so yes we do have one for that let me tell y'all something let me tell you, first of all, it's hot. I didn't really want to even do too much yesterday for my birthday because it was extremely fucking hot outside. Now, y'all know I live in Arizona. Uh, I'll be living here um, for four years this come July, straight from New York. And I didn't gradually go into Arizona, meaning I didn't move from New York to Atlanta, then to Florida, then to whatever, and then Texas and Arizona. I just moved from New York to hell. You know what I'm saying? So I jumped from the little bitty flame and just went straight to hell, okay? Now I'm saying this hell is because it was 118 fucking degrees yesterday on my birthday. And Tati, my eldest daughter, she was like, what you want to do for your birthday? What you want to do for your birthday? And originally I had wanted to go walking around in like Westgate's Plaza because it's an outlet for clothes. Plus they got mad food and stuff like that. So I really had wanted to do that because I just like to walk around a lot, you know, see the sights and shit like that. But, um, no, a bitch was not about to walk around in 118 degree weather. So at first I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know yet. You know what I'm saying? Cause she had plans. And, um, I didn't really want to do too much. I didn't want to go too far because, for one, I, I didn't have my truck. Um, I, my, my Nissan, my my truck, my, my, my SUV was towed on the 12th of June. They towed it because my license was messed up out here from New York. It just been messed up, and I never just took care of it. I just really didn't even care like that. So they towed the truck, So and I, couldn't, I, did, I really couldn't fit everybody in my Malibu because, you know, I have my four kids and my grandson has five. So the Malibu will only seat like... Um, it's six people altogether. So the Malibu will only sit like seat like five because my grandson's car seat is in it. So um, I really couldn't go too far because I didn't want to 
not include my son Wuzzle. Okay, so um, and I had to get my license and stuff straightened out, which I did today. Um, the day after my birthday, it's all straight now, and I could have picked up my truck today, but listen, that's, it's just too fucking hot, so I'll get it tomorrow morning, because by the time I was done, it was like one o'clock in the afternoon, and you know, the sun was already at its highest peak, so I had to do that at like eight o'clock in the morning, so anyway, so I said, I don't know, but I'm gonna go to the post office, I told her I'm gonna go to the post office, and I'm gonna mail off these wigs that I have, and then I'm gonna let you know. So me, Mumsy, and Nay, we get into the Malibu. Now, first of all, it's already hot. It said 123 on the dashboard thing. And I was driving, and I was like, Tati talking about what I want to do on my birthday. Bitch, I want to live. That's what the fuck I want to do on my birthday. Because I don't want to be out here in this fucking heat. Because I'll die. I, you will fucking die. I told y'all already. It's like hell out here. There's four seasons in other states like New York got four seasons. Other countries got four seasons. You know what I'm saying? In Arizona, they don't have four seasons. There's no four seasons. So winter to them, winter to them is winter. To me, their winter is like a nice, nice, cool, you know, like spring slash fall weather. You know what I mean? Like I don't wear a, a coat in the wintertime here. They be wearing coats and shit. I put on a long sleeve shirt and be good. Um, because there, it gets like to be 55 degrees, but their 55 is totally different than 55 degrees in New York. Totally different. So, and their 75 degrees is totally different from 75 degrees in New York. 75 degrees in Arizona is cool. It feel like, it feels like fall weather, um, for New York. 75 degrees in New York is like, it's hot, bitch. It's humid. But out here, it doesn't feel like that. You got to breathe. You can wear a little sweater. So anyway, it's no four seasons here. So... To me, it's more or less their winter, I would say. I would describe it like a spring slash fall. So we're going to say, like, because it doesn't really get cold until, like, cool until, like, um, January, December, January. Um, in October, it gets, like, spring weather. And, um, and then they got um, the fall weather. So I'm going to say it's it's spring slash hell though that those are the two seasons in arizona spring and hell okay now i know y'all probably like bitch what the fuck hell is not a season well hell might not be a season for some states but hell is definitely a season for arizona okay so it's spring slash hell because it is 121 fucking degrees today on june 20th and I did not even know that it can get that motherfucking hot until living here. So it's spring slash hell. Okay? So we are now in hell season. This lady, she's going to say to me in a store today, at the dollar store, she was talking about, um, this, this, she was a weirdo, I think, because like, just stop. Okay? So she was like, I was, I was, me and Mumsy was there, you know what I'm saying? We went and, um. Once he came me to the doctor's because I had to go get my keloid shot. And then we went to the DMV, the motor vehicles, to um, get my driver's license picture because I had to pay them for it. It was $30. Everything was cleared. I had to wait a few days after I had paid it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and shit. For it to clear from New York to Arizona. So... <laughs> We, we went to the 99 cents only store that was, why is my camera, this is what I be talking about with this motherfucking camera sometimes, like, why, why, why? Okay, so, um, so we go there and we're at the 99 cents only store and this lady was like, She's like, don't forget your candles. And I was like, okay. I was like, oh, all right. But God was going to leave it at that. I wasn't going to say nothing. She's like, because you know, it's monsoon season. And I just turned around. I was like, what? What, what are you talking about? Uh, monsoon, yeah. So in my eyes, monsoon is when it's like hard rains and like, okay, 
monsoon is like when it rains so motherfucking hard, your ass can swim in it. It's like a very bad storm and it just don't stop. And this is monsoon season for me because watching that fucking movie, Jumanji, I don't know if y'all remember that movie with Robin Williams. That was one of my favorite movies, Jumanji. Um, they had monsoon. You know, they had a monsoon in the house and the alligator was running through the house and it was raining real hard and it wouldn't stop, you know. So that's what monsoon is. This bitch talking about, um, you know, because it get real windy here and it, and it, I'm like, oh, that, that sh oh, that shit already done passed. What the fuck is you talking about? But I didn't say that to her. I was like, oh, that? I was like, oh, I already been through that. Well, you better get your candles because my power be going out for a week at a time with that. And I was like, Really? So now I'm concerned. I was like, really? Because I've been living here four years and my power ain't never went the fuck out. Where you live at? You know what I'm saying? And she then she told me where she lived at and I was like, okay, maybe that's why your motherfucking power going out. I live over here on the other side where it's a gated community, bitch, okay? And I don't think the motherfucking people from Homeowners Association is going to let nobody's um, fucking power go out. You know what I'm saying? Um... We, yeah, I live over here. The homeowners, they don't let you to have your trash can out after a certain time. They'll come through and find your ass. They be peeking with their cameras, taking secret shots of you like they the paparazzi and shit. These motherfuckers that mailed me pictures of them fucking driving by my house. Talking about, you need to pull your garbage cans back in six inches past this line. Like, motherfuckers, y'all got anything else to do up in this bitch but take secret pictures of me? I swear I be thinking I'm like some type of celebrity when I come out my motherfucking house and they be having pictures of me and shit. Like, what the fuck? Y'all serious? This is how it make you feel like these motherfuckers over here. Like, y'all bitches don't got shit else to do but caption me and what the fuck I be doing over here. So, I don't know about her and no motherfucking monsoon, but... I don't need no candles, all right? And then when she said that to me, I was like, hold the fuck up. She's talking about her electricity been out for like a week at a time. Bitch, it's 120 degrees outside. What the fuck is you talking about? So I was like, so what do you do? That means you ain't got no AC running because, you know, it's central air out here. She was like, no. I was like, so what do you do? Because you motherfucking die. I sleep in the back of my truck. I know you can't leave your truck running all night, so what the fuck is you talking about? Or I'll stay at work as long as I can. All right, get that money. Get that paper. Bitch, you better go to a hotel. Some cheap-ass, cheesy-ass, fucking prostitute-infested hotel where they got some AC. Fuck them, them fucking dirty bitches. Go up in there, bring your own motherfucking sheets and shit and sprays and fucking keep cool. Because I'd be damned if I'm about to live up in the back of my truck for a week or be working too long. She was like, she get these, some type of lights that you just put the batteries in. I was like, all right, but she was like, because you know the kids will blow the candles out. Yeah, bitch, because that's attracting more motherfucking heat in a house that ain't got no electricity. Um, no, me and my kids, we're going to have to go to the motherfucking hotel or somewhere. I'm not about to fucking sit in no fucking house with no AC or nobody's giving day out here in Arizona. Okay, so... Yes, we are in the hell season. And if y'all hear that swooshing noise, that's because I got my little ass fan right here in front of me. And my big ass oscillating fan right there. And my ceiling fan on. And my motherfucking central AC on. Because my room is so huge. The ceilings are really big in my room that the AC don't be kicking like that. I got this little fucking AC vent in my wall. It's like giving a whale a fucking tic tac. Like, really though? You gonna put that shit up in here? I'm going to go get me one of those stand-up ACs so that way I don't have to be doing it. You know, when you get my age, you get hot. And I'm older. And um, it's so fucking hot out here that, look, the only makeup that I could even bother to wear in this heat is eyeshadow. You see, I don't have no foundation on nothing because it's too hot for all of that. You will melt. That shit will melt the fuck off of your head. And listen... A half a wig because I can't do it. And my shirt, like, okay, so this shirt came from Walmart and it did have a collar, but I told y'all my neck get hot. I can't wear no fucking collars like that. I have to cut them off majority of the time. But yeah, so anyway, that is that's what I did for my birthday. We went shopping, we went to the mall and we walked around because it's too motherfucking hot out here. Um but anyway, so yes, I did get this shirt. 
And I put this shit right the fuck back on today because I had it on for my birthday. And I put it on today when I got up early this morning. But I got it from Walmart, okay, for eight bucks. You know, Wonder Woman is out and everybody is going crazy with all this Wonder Woman shit, okay? And sometimes I be getting kind of pissed off because then everybody want to jump on the motherfucking bandwagon. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um... I've been watching Wonder Woman since I have been six years old, five or six years old, because that's when Wonder Woman came out on TV. So I am like the original OG to Wonder Woman, you know what I'm saying? The original. But then you got these people now that don't even know a motherfucking thing about Wonder Woman and just want to jump on a bandwagon and be like, oh, I love Wonder Woman, I love Wonder Woman. Bitch, please, go buy, sit the fuck down somewhere. That's the same way I feel about, well, I can't really say that about The Walking Dead because I have been their number one fan since they started. I love me some Walking Dead. Um, I get depressed when it go off the air. That is, I guess because as a kid growing up, as a kid growing up, like at that age of six, all I would watch is like the scary movies, black and white, okay? Because that's what we had when I was growing up. We had black and white television. So I love to watch, like, I love vampire movies. Any type of vampire movie, I love it. I've always loved to watch vampires, and that's, like, my number one favorite. And then, like, The Walking Dead. Now, The Walking Dead, it would be called, like, zombies. They call them zombies. And then, But when I was growing up, there were so many different movies of Night of the Living Dead. You know what I'm saying? My grandfather and me would watch it together. So I guess that's why I love any kind of movie that's related to zombies, okay? You know what I mean? Or show that's related to zombies because it just brings me back to my childhood. So I love anything that has to do with zombies. Zombies. Um, I'm not like a weirdo, but I don't really like um, Frankenstein movies, and I really am not a huge fan of, of werewolf movies. It's either um, vampire movies, I mean, vampire movies, because I've I've just been so familiar with those as a kid, or like zombie movies. So I love anything. Um, majority of them, I like anything that has to do with dead people i think that's what mumsy always says that i love stuff that has to do with dead people because i'm always watching like investigation discovery channel where people are getting killed and i like realistic shit i'm not saying that the walking dead is real but if that shit ever do motherfucking happen you best believe a bitch gonna be on front line center i'm gonna be running shit like rick do okay and i'm gonna know how to survive and everything like that i'm gonna be the light-skinned michonne okay but I'm going to probably have some wigs in my backpack because I'm going to have to change it up every day. I ain't going to want to. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. But, but I'm about to be the light-skinned Miss Sean. But anyway, so Walmart got some really nice things from the Wonder Woman collection. And I have a lot of Wonder Woman stuff now, for real. I'm getting to the point where it's like, listen, am I the motherfucking superhero? So anyway, I seen this. This was the last one. And I was like, oh. there's probably like seven different of them. And I really was so undecided of which one I wanted. But I knew I wanted this. I wanted to buy two at the time because they were $7.96. So I knew I was going to buy two of them at the time. But I just was so undecided. My main point to being at Walmart was I was there to buy a beer ball set. And I know y'all probably like, what the fuck is a beer ball set? A basketball hoop. For my grandson. He's two. So, you know, one of the little ones like this because he loved be a ball. He called it be a ball. So, I was like, come on, we gonna go. You want you want to be a ball? I'm gonna buy you a be a ball set for my mom's birthday. It wasn't my birthday yet, but you know what I'm saying? So, as we walk up the woman, I seen this. And I was like, oh my God, I have to have this. This was the last one. And it was a size 19. I was like, God damn, it's too big. But I didn't want it so tight fitting because I wanted to cut this um, the collar off. And I don't really like things to be too tight on me because it's hot. You know what I'm saying? It's hot out here. So I, I really rather it been loose. So I bought this and I just left. I only bought one. I said, hey, well, you only need one, girl. Cut it out. You only need one. Well, a bitch go to her post office the other day. And I get a package in my post office box. Now, first of all, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> okay, so she writes me the letter on this, the mail priority shipping label. I didn't even give a shit because you wrote something to me. She was like, April, don't talk about me, LOL. I didn't have time to get a good card. I saw these and thought of you. Happy birthday. Rusa, Ro Rusa, I think that's how you say it. Girl, if I said your name wrong, I know you're going to be watching this. And just say, girl, you said it wrong. But either way, thank you so much. 
I thought this was funny as hell. I didn't even care about a card. This was the better than a card, okay? Because she was like, don't talk about me. This was perfect. And when I opened it, I was like, okay, hold up. I was like, oh, shit. Did she just send me the ones that I was just looking at? Like, were you behind me? She, let me see, where she live at? No, she live in Texas, so she wasn't watching me in the store, okay? So, she sent me, now girl, did you rip the price tag off? Like, I didn't know where it came from, okay? It don't even matter, y'all know I am not, who, uh, you know, y'all know I am cheap. I am not one to be like, no, she didn't buy me that $7.96 t-shirt. It's the thought that counts. And if somebody could even have the audacity to say something about a gift that somebody else bought them of the price, then bitch, you don't even deserve the gift. So listen, a bitch done bought her own, okay? So listen, she bought me this one, okay? I told y'all. Walmart got these bomb ass tees. Okay, look at this one. This one is so cute. And this is the one I was looking at. Okay. Now, I don't think that I will cut the collar on this one because it's thinner than this one. The material's thinner. And I like the way it's structured. So I don't think I'm going to cut the collar off on this one. I mean, you, I can't cut the collar off on all of them because then you'd be like, girl, oh, your shirts ain't got no fucking collar. And then she got me this one that I was looking at. Okay, so I don't know if I want to cut the color off of this one either. I, I just don't know. But okay, like, look, what I tell y'all. And then this one right here, okay? So this one, I probably will cut the color. Ooh, the light is changing. Oh, that's because I'm... This is the one that I probably cut the color off of, okay? Because it doesn't have her face on it. So I'll probably cut it off right here. I think this one will probably look the best with the color cut, collar cut off because it's red. And y'all know I don't really wear a lot of red. So it would look really, really sexy with the collar cut off of this one. What y'all think? And if y'all wondering, like, what the fuck is you talking about? I do have a video of how I cut the collars off of my shirt tutorial. So just check it out on my channel. It's very new. So... Diva, thank you so much. That was like so nice of you. Um, I was like, wow, I was I was so fucking happy too. Like she must have been in my head for real. She was in my head, and I was just like, oh shit. Yeah, so this was one of them, and then those three. And I think there's other there's probably like I think there's like two more different styles. Um, then I got another package, and this one is for I'm from Angela Simpson, and did she give me? Okay, listen, how does a bitch know that I like to wear? I did say I like everything with elastic. Like I love elastic. If I could, I would wear elastic all day long. So she sent me these elastic Wonder Woman leggings. Okay, look. Isn't that fucking cute right there? Like, seriously? So, yes. And these are some good-ass thick leggings, too. Like, not no see-through ones. So, I'm kind of scared to wear them right now because, like I said, it's hot. And I don't really want my cooch already be sweating like that. Then it be starting to... Mm -mm. So, I am saving these, but I want to wear them with one of my shirts. So, I'm not really sure which one. Listen, I might have to have my son, my 19-year-old son, make me some Wonder Woman sneakers. Because he be designing sneakers and shit. I might have to have him design me some Wonder Woman ones or whatever. But I'm like Wonder Woman out, okay? Like, seriously, Wonder Woman out. Then, now this wasn't in... This wasn't in my mailbox, but then my little two-year-old grandson come to me with a little gift talking about, happy birthday, happy birthday, my mom, happy birthday. <sighs> okay, then my daughter and Tinky go out and get me a freaking silk robe, a Wonder Woman silk robe. Now, I feel like this... It looked like a robe, like, you know how they be going in a boxing ring and shit? Like, I'm about to be... um the girl version of Mayweather and shit, okay? With this robe on, oh, it's so freaking cute. Wonder Woman right here. I love Wonder Woman so much. Like, seriously, so I'm like, all right. Listen, I had Wonder Woman shit before the movie even came out, before they even thought of the movie. I have I have Wonder Woman shirts from like 10 years ago that I purchased. I mean, I got this Wonder Woman cup too that um, my girl Jen sent me with this hat and I really want to use the cup, but I don't, I'm scared, like, if I use that cup and put it in the dish, the sink, kids are going to be like, oh, well, she don't mind. And I'm going to be like, you drinking my, you drinking out my cup. Oh, was this your cup? Fuck you mean, was this my cup? You know this shit is my cup. What the, f 
that's how my kids are. They will take your shit. So anyway, let's get on to this real talk. Before we even do, I know y'all motherfuckers is like, bitch, your teeth though. You didn't see, we've been, you've been running your mouth for this long and you ain't said nothing about it. So yes. I have my new permanent teeth in and I love them. I got them last Thursday, June the 15th. So y'all see me do that real talk with no motherfucking tooth in my mouth looking like some redneck hillbilly from the outskirts of Mississippi, okay? Yes, I did have no tooth, but this week I fucking do so. I'm so happy about my, my teeth right now. Y'all really just don't fucking know. I am like over happy. Like seriously, I'm over happy. So I want to thank everybody because yes, they are there and I'm like, uh, it's, it's getting, I have to get used to it because I keep licking the backs of them because it's much thicker than my teeth. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a crown, so it's over my teeth, and it just looks perfect. He did, like, an amazing job. So you can't even tell that they're fake um, because they're in my gums. They're, he just did a really amazing job, and he went all out for me. My dentist actually, when I went in, I was crying after it was done because I was, like, so overjoyed, but he was like, you know, I, I just wanted to know, I just wanted to let you know that I just went a little bit, uh, um, I got you a more expensive pair than what you had paid for. And I was like, what are you talking about? So he had them made into porcelain, but inside of them, they're gold. So like, they don't ever break or anything like that. And I was like, wow. He's like, I thought you deserved this. And he showed me like this before and after picture, like he showed me a picture that they had took with my regular teeth and then he showed me a picture cause, and he had it, he printed them both out and he showed me a picture with these teeth. That same day he went and took a picture of my teeth and then he um, printed it out and I was just like looking at it like, oh my God, it was like this huge difference and it really didn't look like, I mean, my gap did look bad to me. You guys probably would feel that way. It didn't, but it really did cause I could stick my tongue through it and it just made me feel so insecure, okay? and very uncomfortable to smile so and you guys know that every time you see me smile you never see my teeth like that so and people will talk about my teeth and they'll still talk about my teeth to this day but you know i was just so overjoyed and so happy and i'm just very very pleased with them like at first when i first met him his bedside manner wasn't that great but it's the type of person he is he's from new york so i guess that is why but he's actually an amazing dentist and i absolutely love dr greenberg and i love his staff they are amazing so if you guys ever need a dentist and you guys are out here definitely check them out he does military discounts he does all kind of discounts if you don't have insurance but you have to pay with cash he gives you huge discounts. So I got a lot of discounts. Oh. And let's get on to this real talk because I have talked long enough because my car flashed off. Um, if you need a real talk about yourself, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the hashtag or the subject line real talk. And that's about it. We're going to do two because one of them is like dumb long. So let's get you guys. So, hey, Auntie April, I really feel like you're one of the aunts I should have had. Before I get to my problem, I just wanted to tell you that. I love your energy, personality, and your realness. If you guys keep seeing me, it's because the light is getting dark out and I really don't want to turn this ring light on because it's already hot. Okay, I just wanted to tell you that I love your energy, personality, and your realness. The New Yorker in you will always come through. Sidebar, if you do decide to visit your mom and meet and greet with your New York diva, um, meet um, with your mom, a meet and greet with your New York diva family via YouTube would be great. I'm attaching my picture so you can know who you're talking to. You can call me Tiffany. So I come from a very big family where my grandparents had six children, six girls and one son. In total, my grandparents have 17 grandparents, grandkids. My mom and dad also have six girls. Growing up, my sisters and I wasn't treated right by two aunts in, a, in particular. Let's call them Ruth and Liz. Ruth lived in the same building as my family and grandparents, so we'd always see each other. As children, my sister and I ignored the way we'd be treated just so we could be around Aunt Ruth and Aunt Liz, plus their kids. They would talk shit about my mom in front of us, make us clean Ruth's dirty ass house, and when she cooked, we were around, the bitch would give us pretty much whatever was left over after they finished eating. We didn't share our mistreatment with our mom until years later. Fast forward to now. I'm 32 and my parents' second oldest. My, me nor my sisters have any dealings with Ruth or Liz. But after a family meeting with the grown siblings and grown grandkids, my sisters and I let everything out. 
At the meeting, our aunts and uncles appeared to be shocked by the truth. We finally admitted regarding Ruth, especially Ruth. Under false pretense, Ruth seemed like she wanted to make amends, but flipped the script real fast. Over the last year, this bitch has singled out my mother and has made it her business to reach out to most of my mom's friends and favorite cousins to throw my mom under an imaginary of bus in attempts to make people stop interacting and talking with my mom. Basically, to dislike my mom. Out of all the siblings, my mom is the one everybody loves being around because she's not judgmental. So my, ch my mother's children, she treats like random bitches from the block. Whatever imaginary issue she has with my mom had been projected onto all six of us. Throughout everything, my mom would say, that's still your aunt, be respectful. But now she's like, y'all grown. If she comes for any of y'all, y'all have the right to show off or show up. I've seen my mom go through every emotion behind this bitch, and I'm tired of her fucking with my mom. The last incident was her lying to my older sister and telling her she used to sell my mom drugs. Wow. Now, I wouldn't care if that was even the case or not. It was disgusting of her to say, and I was ready to kick her door in. My mother says she's ready to fuck her up, but she knows she'll call the cops and press charges. What makes this harder is the fact that my mother just found out that she has a heart failure, and only 25% of her heart is functioning and not well, so she doesn't need any type of stress. I'm lost and torn about what to do because my mother's health is what matters the most, but not with the shit, and, but I'm not with this shit. And I refuse to let this bitch disrespect my mother again. What would you do? I'm sorry for the long rant. She is so pretty and she looks so familiar. Like, I've seen her somewhere before. For some reason, you just look so familiar, girl. Like, seriously, you look like I've seen you somewhere. She just looks so familiar. And I do apologize about the color, but I'm not about to fix it because, listen, it's hot. I'm not about to turn this ring light on. So... You know something? Families can be so fucking dysfunctional. It's a shame because family means family. And that should mean a word of significance. Like, when we family, we do stuff together. We hold each other's hands. We hold each other back. I got you. I got you. But it don't be like that. In this day and age, family is not the same as it was maybe like in the 40s and 50s. People were stuck together. They would do stuff. They had each other's back. Not in this day and age, okay? Not at all. Let me tell you something. Um, I don't have um, aunts that, not that I know of. I mean, maybe there are some. Uh, but I have cousins that I really don't care for too much, okay? Um, and you know something? My family members are kind of like that. Now, in a sense, it's her aunt. In a sense, it's not my aunt. It's my cousin, Keisha. She know I don't really fuck with her. And I don't fuck with her. It's not I don't really. I don't. And she don't fuck with me no more. And that's fine, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it was a time when we used to be somewhat semi-cool. We lived in the same state, um, in the county, in um, New York. So we didn't grow up together, but we knew we, we would see each other occasionally. She's not my favorite cousin. She's not even one that I... Really, she's like more or less the degenerate one of the family. But when she moved upstate New York, because I moved upstate New York, I started, you know, fucking with her. Like, she got a baby, she got kids, and our kids are like the same age. Whatever. But she's more or less, more or less like a user. You know, them type of bitches that when you got something, that's when they want to be your friend. You know, so she would borrow clothes. And when she would give them back, it would be like, bitch, you might as well just keep this shit. I don't want that shit. It's either outdated or it's so fucking filthy around the neck or whatever. It's like, I don't even want that. When's the last time that you washed yourself? Okay. But she always think that she was cute. Her husband worked a lot. She didn't work. She was dirty. She wouldn't keep the house up. When he would go to work at night, you know what I'm saying, she would bring over young boys to the house, invite them over while her husband was at work. And when I say young boys, I'm like, you know, she's my age. We're actually the same exact age. But they would be like half of her age. But she don't look like she my age. That bitch look like she in her 60s, okay? Anyway. I really stopped fucking with her because... I just, when, you know, you, you only wanted to fuck with me because I had something, which was clothes or you didn't have no friends. Once she got, once she got friends, she stopped fucking with me like that. That's cool, whatever, because I really didn't care for you anyway. You didn't brush your teeth enough for me. 
And on top of that, you didn't really wash neither. But but she would always talk about me. You ever notice that it's the ones that always talk shit about you that um when you see them later on in life, it's like, damn, you know, like in Friday, they was like, damn, to the side. That's how I look at her now. Like I look at her on Facebook and like, I don't even give a fuck if she watching this because what the fuck she going to do? She, um, she real two faced it. So she would always talk about my cousin Kenya and then turn around. I want to be her friend. She, and I got tired of that shit. Like stop talking about Kenya. That's my favorite cousin. That's the one who lived upstairs on the 10th floor. And we was always cool. But Kenya is a liar. But I still love her to death. But anyway, I see her on Facebook and shit now. Look like her hairline is receding. And I mean, I'm not saying that to be mean or whatever, but I'm saying though, her hairline is all the way where my half wig starts at right here. This is where her hairline is at now. So it's like, oh, bitch, she was talking all that shit about me. And now look at you. You look like a hot ass fucking mess. And girl, like, Makeup does wonders for people. I'm not saying you're going to be beautiful, but you're going to look a whole lot more approachable. All right? When I say that, like, meaning that bitch is ugly as sin, and it should be a sin to look like that. But it's use some makeup. Put on some makeup. Because makeup always enhances things. Or and, and It's not magic, but it'll work as somewhat magic for some people. You know what I'm saying? And I just be like, damn, why does bitch do She should put some makeup on her face because I'm pretty sure it will help her a little bit. She pulled them niggas. They ain't much to look at neither, but I'm saying. But anyway, I just, like, went into, like, a whole different, like. Um. Um, I just went into a whole tangent. So anyway, like, okay, so you know what? Um, family be the ones, like, seriously, like, they just be the ones, like, I don't know. Here's the thing, that's your aunt. It doesn't matter if she's your aunt or your friend. Disrespect is disrespect. And because your mother is sick, sometimes... It take a bigger person to walk away from a lot of shit. And that's unfortunate that we got to be bigger people in the matter. But sometimes we just got to be a bigger person and step away from the ignorant ass motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Like there are a lot of ignorant ass motherfuckers in the world. And I have come to realize that just from doing YouTube, I have noticed there are a lot of ignorant ass, dysfunctional, disrespectful people in the world. And people say a lot of things because they hate on you. They're jealous. It's all a bunch of different shit a lot of times you know what i'm saying so with that being your family just because she's your family don't mean y'all gotta be the best of friends y'all even gotta fucking associate with one another but that's your mom's sister and your mom is ill now here's my thing your mother might be ill but bitch you fucking ain't and what i say what i mean by that is But I'm, I wish he would stop fucking texting me, Rebecca. Okay? I get it. Um, what I mean by that is... Okay, that's my best friend, Rebecca. Text me. It's either my best friend, Rebecca, or my best friend, Shay. And I love them both, but stop fucking texting me. Put it all in one text, okay? Anyway, so... Even though it's your family members, they caddy and they motherfuckers too. Sometimes your best friends and your friends are better family members than your own fucking family members, okay? So what I mean by that is this. Listen, bitches are caddy, family members caddy. Your mother is sick. Sometimes we just got to let bygones be bygones and we got to be the adult in the matter. Because sometimes, you know what? They say about us black people, we act ratchet. We don't know how to act. We don't have to let the whole world know how we, we deal with shit as family members or whatever. Because we don't need nobody else talking about us as black folk or any folk for that matter. But you know what? There are a lot of ignorant people in the world and a lot of people that are just so hateful that they'll say whatever. And if this makes your day by talking about me and talking about my family members and if this makes you feel not miserable or this makes you feel happy, then go ahead. I'm going to give you that happiness because you know what? At the end of the day, I have my own shit and I ain't got to worry about you and your dumb shit. So what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes we got to walk away from the matter. We got to be the bigger person. And sometimes being a bigger person take a whole 
fucking lot out of you to be the bigger person. Meaning, there have been many motherfucking times where a bitch like me ain't trying to be the bigger person. I have to walk, have had to walk away enough fucking times from bitches or altercations because for what? It's like, hold up April. You gonna let this bitch get you in trouble because you gonna have a whole lot more to lose than she do. You gonna go to jail. You gonna lose your money because you gonna have to bail yourself the fuck out because you gonna flip the fuck out. She gonna run off at the mouth with you and you gonna pop her in her motherfucking mouth and then she gonna try to hit you back and then y'all gonna be dusting and fighting and then you gonna go to jail. So it's it's like you got a whole lot more to lose sometimes and sometimes being a bigger person takes a lot. It takes being a bigger person. Whether you think so or not, sometimes being a bigger person may make you feel like you a chump, you a bitch ass, you a punk, whatever. But you got to look at it like this. Hold up. I'm the bigger person. I'm more classier than her. I'm a grown ass woman. Now, being a bigger person don't mean that you got to just walk away completely. What I mean by that is this. Put your crown on, bitch. And let Ruth and what other bitch and your family talking shit, let them know, listen. You have tried this shit for years and have been running your mouth off for years, okay? About me, my mother, my family. This is where it's going to stop. If you have anything else negative to say, I suggest you don't even bother opening your mouth. You are not welcome to call. You are not welcome to ring my doorbell or my mother's doorbell. Better yet, we are not even going to consider you family anymore. From this day on, I am going to ignore your ignorant ass and I'm going to keep it pushing. And I highly suggest you do the same. Because misery love company. And what goes around, come back around. And walk the fuck off. That's all you got to do. Bitches hate when you read them. But if you want to be out there and you want to argue rah, 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 and pop a bitch, then you get more negative looks at yourself. I have learned to realize that a lot. You know what I'm saying? Meaning, if I come at you negative and talk shit to you, Somebody going to say something. Sometimes you got to just handle the situation as a bigger person, regardless if it's going to make you feel like this. At the end, you're going to be like this. And this bitch going to be over here like that. You know what I'm saying? Here's the thing. You could attract more bees with honey than with vinegar. Me personally, I would just say what I got to say to that bitch. I wouldn't even yell that shit. I don't, you know, that's me. My temperament is I go from zero to 100 real quick. So I try to leave myself at a level. And when I don't want to fuck with somebody no more, or I, I don't want you fucking with me, or I want you to know that you don't got on my last motherfucking nerve, and I suggest that you step the fuck away from me, I'll let a bitch know, or a motherfucker know, it doesn't matter, species or whatever. Listen, this is not what you're going to do today, and this is how I'm going to handle you. And I put on my stern motherfucking voice and my invisible motherfucking crown because I'm a bitch. I'm a queen, all right? Not a princess. A motherfucking queen. And I put on my shit, and I sit my hot ass up on my throne. You ain't got to see the throne, but I'm letting you know. I'm letting you know that I'm better than you right about now. Peasant. That's how I'm looking at you as a peasant. And I'm going to let you know in my stern motherfucking queen ass sitting thrown ass you're not gonna fuck with me and you're not gonna fuck with my family members and then by the time i finish telling you about yourself i'm gonna give you that look because y'all know that look is i wish a bitch would go ahead and say something if i were you i wouldn't that's how I handle my situations, and I keep it pushing. And this is with anybody. I don't really give a fuck who you are. Because once I put my stern voice on and I let you know, there's nothing for you to say. When you when you yelling at a bitch and arguing with them, then they yelling back at you. And nobody's hearing what nobody got to say. But when you put on your stern voice and you let them know in a calm, stern voice, she listening. And then by the, by the time you finish, of course she going to want to yell. But bitch, throw by. Okay? Ain't nobody got time for that. All right? I don't have time for that. All right? That's how I handle bitches, just like with that bitch Nicole who busts my motherfucking window. 
I have yet to see that bitch. And okay, I have already had it in my mind state when I see that bitch. I'm not going to argue with you because nine times out of 10, I'm going to see you out in public. And I'm not about to embarrass myself because I'm 43 years the fuck old. I am not about to embarrass myself over you. So what I was going to do when I seen her was I was just going to walk up to her con con calmly and let her not start running her mouth, but I was just going to pop her in her motherfucking mouth. I wasn't going to start arguing like, bitch, you bust my motherfucking window. What? I'm not going to do none of that shit because I don't want to bring no attention to shit. I was just going to walk up to her calmly and pop her in her motherfucking mouth and then walk off because you're not going to expect that shit. Just like bitches ain't going to expect you to be calm about shit when you approach them because you already pissed off. So they already know you mad. So they are wait They are looking for you to act ratchet. Okay. They are looking for you to come out of your character and act beside yourself. So no, don't give them what they want. Give them what they ain't fucking expecting. Cause if you are calm and real cool about the shit, Bitch ain't expecting that. She don't know what to expect after that shit. Just the same way that I'm a hands on the call. So, yeah, like I said, I'm probably going to walk up to her and pop her in her motherfucking mouth. What's she going to do? I'll slap the shit out of you and keep it pushing. I won't even give you an opportunity to fucking raise your hand back at me. Because if I stand there and run off at the mouth with you, then that's giving you an opportunity. And she's an opportunist, but she already know don't fuck with a bitch like me because she is on a level three her attitude but bitch my left my attitude my whole persona is on a level 100 i'm not the one don't fuck with me because i've been through too much shit she's kind of a little scary bitch i fucking cut you and then keep it pushing with no problem all right with no problem so i don't i don't really like a lot of attention i don't like a lot of people looking at me and that's just how i am when people see me out in the street they be like oh my is my lovers sometimes i'd be like no I'm not her. And then it's the tattoos that give it away. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't like when people approach me and they jump out of the woodwork. I've had people do that. And it kind of like makes me feel like, okay, I don't, I just want to, I don't want attention brought to me. I'm then I'm just that type of person. I really don't like attention brought to me. So I probably would just pop Nicole in the mouth and keep it walking. Like, you know how you be in, in prison and they shank another inmate. Then they just keep it moving. They just, they walking by and they shank them. And they just keep moving. You would never even think it was their ass. That's how it would be. But I wouldn't shank her. I'd just be walking by. I see her. Pow! Keep it walking. Keep pushing. Because what you going to do? you like, oh, shit. This bitch just fucking walked by and, and smacked the shit out of me. You didn't expect that shit. What you expected was me to come up on you and be like, oh, bitch, you bust my motherfucking window. Blah, 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 blah. No, nah, I'm not going to do that shit. Or I could, what else I could do is I could just approach you and be like, listen, this not what you're going to motherfucking do, okay? You're not going to come to my motherfucking house and bust my window and think you're going to get a fuck away with it, okay? Because there's a time and a place for everything, okay, bitch? A time and a place for everything. So I suggest you watch your back at all times. And then I just walk the fuck off because she ain't expecting that neither. See, that's the shit. Your inner peace. Your inner peace that get a motherfucker hurt all the time. Have you fucked up? And you know what's so crazy about it? I got you. You think, you think some shit's going to pop off one of these days, but bitch, I got you so nervous for the rest of your fucking life out here in Arizona. You don't know what the fuck to expect. And I ain't even thinking about your bitch ass no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even thinking about you. So, sweetheart, don't let them see you coming and don't let them have you out of character. Let that bitch know in a calm, stern fucking voice. Put your motherfucking invisible queen tiara on. Sit your fucking ass on your throne. And talk to that peasant bitch like she ain't shit. Don't even give her a time. Allow her to fucking say a word. Don't raise your voice. Give her eye contact because bitches don't like that shit. I know that sometimes when bitches argue, ah, uh -huh, bitch, fuck, fuck, fuck. They looking all around. It's eye contact because people don't like to give eye contact. Um, this is not what you're going to do today, okay? You ain't got to sway your head with none of that shit, okay? Because we're not Stevie Wonder. But this is not what the fuck you're going to do. Eye contact, eye contact. Put your stern voice on and let that peasant bitch know. I guarantee you, sometimes you gotta let people go. Let them out of your life. What's she gonna do? She gonna call up your family members and be like, do you know Maybelline's daughter came up to me and told me off? She gonna have to tell the story. I would rather that bitch tell a story than everybody else in the family. Like, did you see Maybelline daughter acting like that, girl? I 
me, I understand how freaking Ruth was acting, talking about her family members, but she just really made a spectacle of herself. And you see that? If that were my child, that's more fire to the flame or flame to the fire. We'll need that. Just, just tell her like it is and let it be. And if you see her at any family function, fucking ignore that bitch. She is not even there. She is a peasant. That bitch is a motherfucking peasant. I know a lot of peasant bitches on some real shit. I know a lot of peasant bitches. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let her know what y'all would do in that case, you know. Y'all think that it's because it's family that it's y'all family. Them bitches, the family be the first and the worst ones to do your ass in all the motherfucking time. So this is the last real talk because this one is like um, a fucking essay, a store, a school essay, all right? So I figured I would just read this one. I should have just read this one from the beginning of Real Talk and never even talked about my motherfucking self, but whatever. I'm just joking, all right? Warning. Oh, warning. This may be a long one. <laughs> you don't say. But I really need some wisdom right now. Okay. Hey, April. Girl, I'm so upset right now, and I just need your advice. You can call me Sophia. I have a sister-in-law, Josephine, that has been in and out of my brother's life, Junior, for 20 years now. And out of those years, my mother, sister, and I have stayed far away from their drama. Since day one, he brought her into my mother's home. She has lied after lied after lied about her family, friends, and just her life, period. Over those years, we would all gather at our mother's home for dinners or family events. I try my hardest to be kind to the psychopath, but keep my distance. It never works because she would find a way to get a hold of me and talk shit about my brother and or my brother would call me to complain about her. I couldn't take it any longer and just stop going around my mother and not answering phone calls from then. That worked for some time. They finally separated two years ago or so, I thought. It was so peaceful without her and our family. My son could finally have a relationship with my brother, his uncle. In those 20 years, they never had any children. Josephine had told my mom she could not have children because her she had cancer and they had to remove her uterus. This was a lie. That later would be that would later change. We live in a small town and my children and I would run into her, but we would quickly hide and turn the other way. Never said anything to her, nor would she. Last January of 2016, I walked into my gym and guess who started working there? Yep, Josephine. Mind you, she has been a job hopper in those 20 years or gets fired for starting drama. That morning, I didn't stay long. I was hoping she didn't see me. That same day, I called my mom and I told her. She just told me, be careful. Now, going back to another reason why my mother was afraid of this woman, because in years have passed, she has done a lot of shit to my brother. I wasn't worried because her and I have never had any beef. All their drama was between her and my brother. Nevertheless, I took my mother's advice and stayed away from the gym. And girl, I missed working out. Anyways, months had gone by and I was so out of shape and I was still paying for a gym membership I wasn't using. So April of last year, I went back and I didn't see her working there anymore. I was so relieved and had called my mother about her no longer working there. Moving forward, my brother looked his happiest and I was happy that he finally moved on with another woman or so I thought. I like the way she's wording this shit. It's good. In November, I was looking for a smaller, more comfortable home with my oldest daughter. Now in college, I needed something small for my son and I. I had found a two-bedroom Q home in the perfect school district. I wanted my son to be in. I had gone to speak with the landlord, and he had told me the home would be ready to move into in December of 2016. I filled out the rental application and was approved. I was so happy. Weeks into this, I would go and check on the home to see how close the remodeling had, had been. I would stop in and have a talk with the maintenance man and move in and move in was on December 1st. I had gone in to speak with the landlord about the final work on the home. Mind you, this whole time, all was well. I was approved for the application. He told me my home was mine. Then out of the blue, the landlord told me laughingly, Some here, someone here knows you. I stopped by and wasn't sure what he meant by that. So I asked, who knows me? He says, some lady. I'm thinking, no big deal. I keep to myself. And then he told me he wasn't sure if it would be a good idea for me to move in. I was like, what? Then I asked him, who is this lady and what did she say about me? He He's like, no, I better not say anything. I then asked him again, who was she? He said, Josephine. I was like, oh, okay. 
Then he said, I just don't want any problems. I then told him, why would there be any problems? He didn't ever say what this evil lying bitch told him about me. He never told me what she said. Something didn't sit well with me after that. So I drove to the home and the two maintenance men were j there just finishing up. I told them what the landlord had told me about Josephine. So these two guys spilled the beans and told me everything. Unbeknownest to me, someone had been watching me come into the small neighborhood. Yep, it was Josephine. I didn't know she lived there, nor did it make a difference to me because we never had drama. That was always between her and my brother. Why would she be talking shit about me? She had gone to them and my future landlord told them I've seen a little black sheep over here and it belongs to some girl. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I seen, She told him, I've seen a little black Jeep over here, and it belongs to some girl I know. And that landlord said, yeah, Sophia, she's going to rent the home for me. Josephine had then told him, if you rent to her, there's going to be nothing but trouble with the cops here all the time. She then told them a bunch of crap that, honest to God, was not even me. I told him, you have done a background check on me. I have never been involved with the law, nor have I ever moved from job to job. Still at this time, I was thinking, why would Josephine be talking all this crap? I have never done or said anything to her. The two maintenance men told me not to worry about it, and they would have a talk with the landlord. My son and I was still confused, left and went to Hobby Lobby to pick up some moving boxes. We were just leaving when guess who we ran into, almost ran into, yeah, my brother and Josephine. He was shocked and surprised to see me. And, well, as the look on Josephine's face by this point, I was so pissed from this lying, evil bitch had tried to keep my son and I out of this home. April, I could not keep it in any longer for over 20 years. I went off on this bitch right there in Hobby Lobby. My brother was trying to hold me back out of the blue. He said, stop, Josephine is pregnant. I was like, what? This bitch can't have kids. She told mom they removed her uterus. Hobby Lobby employees kicked me out. I went home crying. How pissed off was I? My son and I never moved into that little house. Fast forward to this year. My son and I were my, my son and I were walking out of Target and guess who parked right next to my car? Yep, my brother and Josephine. He comes up to me all happy and said, We need to squash this. I said, Squash what? I didn't go talk shit about Josephine. She never got out, out the car. Even now I am so pissed. I told him, no, I'm not going to let it go because I've never done shit to her. Why did I need to apologize to her? Listen to what my brother told me. Why this bitch went and told the landlord all these lies about me. Because Josephine wanted revenge against me. My son and I are standing in Target parking lot and I hear my brother say she wanted revenge. April, in all my years, I've never heard anyone say that word. Who says that? Unless you're just evil and an ungodly person godless person. I was like, why would she want revenge against me? What did I ever do to her? He then told me that day at the gym on January 2016, I had gone to her boss and got her fired. I was speechless. As God is my witness, I never said anything to her boss at the gym or anything or any job she has ever had. And April, I promise you, when my son and I walked into the store that Josephine would be working at, we never said nothing to her or her co-workers or anyone. Only thing my son would say was, look, there is my Aunt Josephine. But nothing, nothing ill was ever spoken to her. I told my brother that, but he didn't believe me and told me I needed to apologize to her because she was be she was going to be having his baby. I made a decision from that moment on. I never spoke to anything about her, and God knows I didn't. I got into my car. And I left, never to worry about my brother and her again. My parents knew all of this and knew who she is. But for respect to my brother in these 20 years, we never told this woman anything. I was fine not having them in my life. Fast forward to today, last Wednesday, my mom called me and told me she was on the way to the hospital because Josephine was having the baby. I told my mom, what does that have to do with me? And don't you remember she told you years ago she had no damn uterus? Yes, but it's for your brother. I was like, no, mom, I will not have anything to do with this person ever. Yesterday, I got a knock on my front door, and guess who it was? My brother and Josephine with a baby. He comes in all happy like nothing ever happened, and so did she. They're like we like we wanted. They're they're like we wanted you to meet your niece, April. I had this bitch on my doorstep, and I wanted to beat her ass, but that ha but they had their baby in their arms. 
They were both acting so damn fake. She told me your aunt, you're her aunt, and we never want to keep her away from you. Honestly, my life is just fine not having them or that baby in my life. I'm good. So they left. This morning, my mother calls me and said, we are going to have dinner to welcome the baby, and I need to be there. April, I went off on my mom. It's not like... Um, it's not like me to do that, but it's also not like me to be fake. I can't. I just can't be fake. What do I do? I mean, how would you feel if you never done anything to your sister-in-law and she went and prevented you from getting a job to support your children or spread lies so that you couldn't get a home for your children and, and act like nothing ever happened? I don't want, I don't know what hurt me the most, her spreading lies about me so we couldn't get a home or my brother saying he wants, she wanted revenge against me or my mother telling me to let it go for my brother and the baby. I'm sorry for the long letter, but I've never had a chance to speak my piece, and I've never even thought about just saving this and not sending it. But April, I trust you, and I need your advice. Please, thanks, Sophia. So see, this is what I'm talking about when it has to do with family. I, I didn't even read this until just now. This was yesterday that I got this. And she put urgent and stuff, and I was like, let me just, let me just do this one, okay? And this is what I'm talking about when it comes to family. Like, you got to just, like, sometimes bygones got to be bygones, and we just got to walk away from it. So it's really fucked up. So this crazy lunatic has been in your family for 20-plus years, and she has lied and lied and lied. And on top of that, when y'all are at family functions, if she's supposed to be with your brother, excuse me, she gonna, she's coming to you, the sister of her boyfriend, her fiance, her husband, talking shit about your brother to you, but she fucking him. Like, who does that? And it's unfortunate that all she did is lie and lie and lie. You know something? What did I tell you? I said, you gonna have to let a bitch know. You gonna have to put on your fucking crown and sit on your motherfucking throne and look down on that peasant bitch and let her know. This is what the fuck you gonna have to do. And that's great. You got a niece and that's your family. Here's the thing. You don't have to go to that family dinner because you don't want to make a spectacle at the family dinner. You don't want to do it in front of a newborn kid. You don't want to do it in front of a bunch of children in general. And sometimes shit got to just be left the fuck alone and you got to be the bigger person and walk the fuck away from shit at times. And it's unfortunate. You don't like that bitch. She didn't lie. She didn't kept you from getting a place where you wanted to be. And you know what? That's good. You didn't even need to be at that place because that bitch live in the same fucking little gated community where you live at. And you don't need to run into her. You don't need her knocking on your motherfucking door trying to borrow bread butter sugar milk or bringing her motherfucking little snotty nose kid over to your door talking about can you watch her she did you a motherfucking favor because i'll be damned if i want to have anything to do with her y'all don't need to have the same landlord so she did you a favor okay count that as a blessing and as for the gym talking about she got you got her fire bitch um i didn't even acknowledge you at the gym i turned my head put my head down and walked the other way and never came back since. So what the fuck is you saying? Now, she seems like the type of person that is just wants altercation running off at the mouth because if anybody could say, I want revenge, like, I have never heard anybody say to me, I want revenge against you, April. I'm seeking revenge. That's some shit that you use in the movies. Like, who the fuck says that shit? Like, some serious shit. Like, Normally, I'd be like, bitch, I'm going to get you. I'm going to see you. That's that's the same thing. But to say I want revenge, like, bitch, you've been watching too many motherfucking movies. I'm just saying. Like, what the fuck? I'm seeking revenge. And on top of that, who says that to their husband's sister? Like, if that was my brother, I would definitely be like, um, listen, there's going to have to be a squash. You're going to have to squash this. Did you or did you not tell my sister that you ain't had no uterus? So she's a liar, a pathological liar. She's ill. She's something is wrong with her. Because if you could just make up stories, story time, story time, there's something is definitely wrong with the person. Here's the thing. What you need to do is, okay, you went off on your mom, Sophia. It's unfortunate because you was upset. Call your mom up and apologize to your mother, okay? That's the number one thing you need to do first. Apologize to your mother. Because she didn't deserve that. But at the same time, you were upset. And just explain to her, listen, mommy, I'm not going to be at the family dinner to welcome anybody 
to the to the family and I already seen her they came knocking on my door I'm not going to be there because I really don't want to cause a scene and I really think it's best for me not to be there it's an uncomfortable situation you already know I'm not going to be there however I will deal with this on my own terms and that's what you do you deal with that shit on your own motherfucking terms okay you ain't got to go to no family function eventually you're going to run into that bitch because now she got a baby with your brother God knows how that even has happened but you're going to run into that bitch and here's what you're going to do before you even run into that bitch you know your brother's gonna fuck call your phone he's gonna ring your phone and god forbid he rings your motherfucking doorbell again with that bitch however if he does ring your goddamn doorbell again with that bitch well honey this your domain this your world okay like i said your crown and your fucking throne your bitch throne and you let her and him know okay in that stern motherfucking queen voice. Because that's what we're going to call it. My queen motherfucking voice. Okay? My queen voice. My queen voice. Is what we're going to call this shit. And you let that bitch know what time it is. You can tell her I don't appreciate your lies. You don't got to get loud and obnoxious. Because that's probably what she's going to do. But you just let her know in a sturdy voice stern and sturdy with the eye contact i don't appreciate you i don't respect you and i don't have time for you nor will i associate myself with you okay from day one you have been nothing but trouble and drama and a liar and i really try to keep myself away from those type of people congratulations on your child however i am not going to be strutting around as a fake individual this is where you're going to call the shots at. I do not appreciate you keeping me out of the home that I wanted to live in. However, you did me a favor because I would never in my life want to live anywhere close to you. Okay? This is what you do. You let her have it. And if your brother don't like it, then so be it. Like I told you, it be the ones that's family. Sooner or later... What is going to happen is he's going to come to his senses. Now, yes, it's been 20 years and this nigga ain't come to his senses yet. Sometimes it takes people a long time to come to their motherfucking senses. But I guarantee you and I promise you that this motherfucker is going to come to his senses sooner the fuck or later. Okay? Sooner or later. He'll see her for who she really is. He may have for once and then she might have ease her way the fuck back in but you don't have to make a spectacle and you damn sure don't have to go to that family welcome dinner for your niece you've already seen the little baby she's a baby she don't know you she ain't gonna remember that moment maybe things will cool down and die down and maybe this lady will come to her motherfucking senses and be a real woman but until then what you need to do is you need to apologize to your mother and let her know why you're not coming your mother already knows why you're not coming but you need to let her know again and remind her this is why i'm not coming okay and i apologize but I'm not coming for these reasons and these reasons alone. And that's all you have to do and leave it at that. You don't got to give her detail for detail, but make it your point in your business to apologize to her. And you deal with that bitch on your own terms. You don't got to deal with her right then and there during family time. Because nine times out of ten, regardless if you tell that bitch in a stern voice, she's going to make a spectacle because she's a drama queen. Okay? And she's going to make a scene. And we don't need that shit. Definitely we don't need it around little kids and a brand new baby. We don't need that shit. Because either way, you're going to look like the bad motherfucking guy either way so just leave it alone and when you come and you cool if you don't never do it that's fine sometimes we gotta leave people the fuck alone and not let them be in our lives no more it's, it could be our brother and our sister i mean i have a brother that's like that you know what i'm saying and he i just don't fuck with him unfortunately i love him to death but i don't fuck with him because he's disrespectful to my dad and something is wrong with him he's gay and i don't even care if he's gay because listen i'm all for that you know what i'm saying i support that but he he's gay and he blames it on my dad for him being gay my dad don't got nothing to do with that shit and then he talks shit about my dad about him being gay if you're not happy with who you love and who you are then you can't blame that on anybody you know what i'm saying like stop blaming your sexuality on my dad okay don't do that just embrace that shit all right just embrace that motherfucking shit but then on top of that he says that he's a psychic like i don't even believe in psychics like you're not about to tell me all of this shit okay and you also claim that you have been possessed so you can't like I said, you can't be all three of those. It's hard enough being gay in the community because people talk shit and they bash gays. But now you a psychic, a fucking possessed psychic. Like, pick one and stick with it, okay? 
you got three things that's going on that's really hard to deal with in life. You can't be all three. Pick one, all right? And then while you picking one, take your medication because something's still wrong with your punk ass. So, you know, he, he would call me up and talk shit about my father. And then he would hurt my dad's feelings and my dad would get upset and call me. So I had to disassociate myself with him. But yes, so just leave it alone and handle it like I said to handle it. And on that note, ladies, my card is going to run out. I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious. Let me know what you think of my new teeth. And I hope you guys stay cool because a bitch can't die out in this heat. And I'll see you in a soon-to-come video.